Hey guys, it's Nolan and Jason here again with Plumbing Webmasters. Howdy. Good to see you. Um, all right, today's topic is something that just came in. We're going to tell a story about a real life thing going on right now. And I've got some stories of my own, but the title of this one is Updated Google Map Placement for Plumbers. Holy crap. <laughs> and the holy crap part is not for me and you or this company. It's client's perception of what's going on or what they want to have and what they can have. Yeah. You know, and just kind of how the whole process works and where the, where the process comes from and where the rules come from. What's the Rolling Stones song? You may not always get what, what you, you want. You can't always get what you want. Yeah. You can't always get what you want, but, but you can get what you need if you uh, follow these rules. And to me, that's a huge disconnect here because guys, so I don't know where to start on this story. I'm gonna, I wanna say a couple things up front, the disclaimer. We have no issue at all getting people up in Google Maps and helping this be extremely successful for them. Right, absolutely, yeah. It is not my problem, it's not Jason's problem, it's not Plumbing Webmaster's problem. This is a problem from the standpoint of the clients or people out there not wanting to follow those rules yeah. and being stubborn about it. Now, I don't disagree with their feelings towards it. Well, no, absolutely. Yeah. There's, abs there's also nothing you can do about it. I'll tell you what. It, it's not just yeah. the um, the willingness to follow the rules. It's also not understanding and accepting, because we honestly have no choice, yeah. that the rules will change. Yeah. Period. Period. Google will change the rules, and there's no court of appeal. No. It's they change the rules. Okay, fine. You got to do it their way. End of story. There's a suckiness about it. I'll give you a, a dumb analogy. You know me well enough by now. It's it's if I go out to eat, now I don't want to pay for the nicest steak in town, but that's what I want to eat. Right. But you know me by now. Why do I not go eat a nice steak sometimes? Just off the top of your head, do you do you know why I don't walk into the restaurant to eat the atmosphere? The, the atmosphere. But but it's more than that. Well, it, it's the, the, that expectation they have rules. that they have rules. They might have a dress code. They have a dress code. Yeah. So or, I, they, or they have unwritten rules of behavior. And, they do. Yeah. There, there's tension in other stuff. And they'll stuff. give you that snooty look if you break one. That's, <laughs> that's right. So I have, I, I, I try to stay chill because uh, I've got too much stress. Makes me stress thinking about it, man. But I stay chill. I had shorts on and flip flops. I was like, ah, crap! I gotta put on pants. I gotta put on <laughs> pants for the podcast. And I don't put on pants necessarily, but I'm not gonna subject people to looking at my legs. Yeah. Nobody wants to see that. But I have to look at it. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, but hey, it is what it is. But you know, the the thing about it is, is that if you're gonna do business in Google. You're gonna follow their rules, right? So I I choose not to go to that steak restaurant. I screw it. I'm gonna cook my own steak. I'll go to the butcher, the Mennonites, or the grass fed place. Right. One or the other. I'm gonna go get me some Mennonite cut up beef, or I'm gonna go to the grass fed spot. I'll cook my own damn steak in my flip flops and shorts. Now, or if you want to go out, go to Hofbrau. I I, I can do that. Hofbrau's little steakhouse yeah. in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Really good steaks. Very affordable. Props on Hofbrau, mm -hmm. and, and they'll accept. Little shout out to Hoff. and they'll they'll accept <laughs> me the way I am. Exactly. But the plumber does not want to comply with the rules of Google. Now, in their defense, the steakhouse has always got the same rules. Yeah. And Google changes their damn rules all the time. And they change them without telling anybody. And then they don't. <laughs> Oftentimes. So, so so I don't want to feel I don't want you guys feeling like I'm beating on you about it. I understand the whole situation very clearly. But when we tell people stuff, you've got to listen to it, and it's not us making the rules. Now, um, I, I guess let's, they, they've got something called Google Quality Guidelines and the Google Webmaster Rules, but tell, tell, tell one of these stories. If okay. you don't mind. The, this is a call that came in. Uh, the, this all unfolded over the last couple of weeks. Client called in. We're changing our address. We're leaving this uh, office we had over here, and we're just going to build a shop out behind our new house. Right. And once upon a time, that was totally fine. Uh, plumbers could use their residence as their office address. It, it was no problem. And it, and it makes perfectly it makes sense, sense. Perfect sense that they'd be able to. Yeah. But um, in 2020, we started seeing Google Business Profile, at the time still called Google My Business, 
started rejecting or throwing out suspensions for residential addresses. Yeah, it was weird to me. They did the crap in 2020, 2021, somewhere, I think it was 2020. 2020. So when everybody was having to work from home, my theory is that when COVID lockdown started, they handed over more of the decision making to the algorithm itself or an algorithm for that. And it red flags stuff more easily. Explain and that to was, them. Explain that to them. They don't know what you just put. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, Please. <laughs> ba- basically, hey, you, uh, put it, you put in all this information in a Google business profile. And there's a program that looks at all of it and looks at a checklist and says, yeah, 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 good, good, good. good well, it's more good. than that. I mean, it's, it's artificial intelligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, machine learning, artificial intelligence. Right. And it has parameters for what it reg- regards as a red flag right. on a business listing. Now, the reason for that is a good one. It's because at one time, people were calling 10 of their friends right. and saying, hey, can I list your house as a business address so that I have a, a, a local address right near town? And their friends, oh, sure, Bob, go ahead. Oh, I just, can, I just can slandered I inter- the Bobs again. Can I energy yeah, Bob, Zach? <laughs> Let's do Zach. Not hardly anybody named Zach except the editor. Oh, yeah, of the video. <laughs> except our video editor. <laughs> um, let me explain this part of it real quick from Google's perspective. So if you had a business, you have your plumbing company, you don't want somebody trashing it out and causing it, the situation makes it difficult for you to operate. Right. If Google let everybody go put up virtual offices, P.O. boxes, homes, friends' houses, secondary locations, 10th locations, their algorithm, their their search engine would suck ass really bad. Right. And nobody would use it. And every business owner out there is aggressive as all get out. And I'm going to explain. Every, everybody will try every trick. Correct. Yeah. So they're on, they are on constant lookout to squelch this issue. And if they didn't do this... The algorithm would suck and nobody would use it. A couple of things would happen. People would go from Google to somewhere else that did fix it, or they wouldn't use the platform in the first place, which you re- rely on to get leads. Right. So nobody, so it would actually, you want to get up there. You just don't want anybody else to get up there. And then, but everybody would do it if there was no rules and there's no rules, nobody would use it. And the whole thing would suck. Google got a business, nobody would use it in the first place. Right. Go back to Yellow Pages or something, which a lot of people might prefer. Yeah, might you name your company AAA one, and you're in the number one spot. So Easy. don't. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> I don't have a problem with people getting upset about Google calling them this. Oh, they, you know, I have this down here. Uh, you know, they're they're too big. This isn't right. You know, all uh, true. Yeah, so uh, it may be partially true, but they're trying to. They're not necessarily trying to be mean to you. Yeah. Yeah. They're often reacting to a bad actor in the industry, or all industries in some cases. And like, if everybody can throw down every address they want, then Google has two choices. They can either start restricting what kind of addresses, right. or they can de-emphasize proximity in search. Which, since they're so focused on local, they're not going to do that. Yeah. So they, they had to go the other way. Yeah. So they started out... Um, the first thing they took off the board was P.O. Box. P.O. That, and, and just, that's been a very long time. Yeah, that, that was like the first thing. That, nope, that 2000, that. like right when they started, like let's just call that one 2010. Yeah. yeah. Uh, eventually, they took off virtual addresses. Let's call that, because I kind of remember this one, 2018. Yeah. Um, and then just in the past couple of years, they've started being iffy on residential addresses. There's nothing in the guidelines that says no residential addresses. Let's let's define iffy for, for everyone listening. Yeah, okay. So 90% of the time, it seems to still work. So what the, they're going to tell you, and I had this conversation, I, I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate here just a little bit because I, yeah. I know so-and-so <laughs> has 14 addresses and this sounds like, do you know what you're talking about, Nolan? They trick them. Don't you guys know how to trick them? And so I always come back and say, hey, you know, most of the time, the home address still works, actually. Yeah. The problem is sometimes it doesn't. If you've already got it. If you've already got it and you don't start messing with it, which Jason will finish the story here in a minute on this yeah. client. And so I'll say, hey, look, do we want to build the house on sand? Do we want to build a, 
you know, we want to have a more solid foundation. So if you're going to spend a ton of time working on something, why not have it be less vulnerable to being taken down? Yeah. Because I, I noticed I said less vulnerable. My, when I was growing up, my family's in the carpet business and we'd say, oh, I bought stainless carpet. And they're like, people would call up and sense to that. Damn it, this carpet's got grape juice and motor oil on it. <laughs> What like, color did it start what as? The hell White. Is, yeah. <laughs> we had it was beige. Everything was beige, and it's like, off, yeah. Well, why'd you put motor oil and so? Well, it was stainless carpet. Yes, it stains less. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't. It's not stain proof because I had to take these phone calls. I said it is stainless. <laughs> You're not guaranteed against motor oil. You know, it's like ridiculous. But anyway, there's no perfectly. Sam, most likely, your house is going to be okay as of today. It's yeah. subject to change. Most likely, it won't come down. And if you have a business address this manned with a decal on the door that looks like a plumber should be in it, right. then it most likely won't ever come down. But there's no hard, fast guarantees because you have AI, you have Black Hat SEO, client, you know, your competitors turning you in which we've, by the way, seen somebody turn in people mm -hmm. on their Google map and literally lose their map and be banned from Google. Yeah, we, we had a client once. lost his uh, Google business account and, uh, you know, calls up incensed what, what the heck's going on, what happened. We couldn't figure out what happened. His <laughs> listing didn't have anything in it that should have read. Blaming it on and us. Yeah, blaming it on us. Yeah. And then eventually, after a lot of conversation, he admitted to the fact that he had gone on to Google and done the suggest and edit on other on competitors' listings and said this is permanently closed. And he had done this on his own Google account that was his own Google Gmail account that was connected to the Google business profile. You just help people figure out how to beat it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just gave them the atomic bomb. And you know, map. Google's like, ah. And boom, he was knocked off Google forever. And he's like, what do I do? And, I, and we were like really frank with him. It's like, rename your business. So I had a guy recently in, in plumbing. He was in leak detection out of the Washington area. And he wanted uh, Tacoma, I think, and suburbs of Seattle, which I believe he was in Kirkland. And I told him the story. I said, listen, Google quality guidelines said, have a business that's manned have a business location that's manned. And, and I said, they don't have super specifics on this, but I'm gonna explain to you what we see works best. Right. So have an office that looks like a plumber would be there and let me explain that to you. And they'll say, um, it means that it's not a five-story office building with right. marble, you know? <laughs> it means that, <laughs> or a two-story office building, yeah. Really, really even. If it is a two-story office building, doesn't look like one that a doctor's office or lawyers would be in necessarily. Right. It, it most likely it's a light industrial park with our panel metal and overhead door and a man door yeah. with an office and a warehouse that looks like a plumbing facility. Now it could be a house in a in a light industrial area or a, a residential home in a commercial area that's right next to a business and has a sign out front. It obviously, in a, in a, in a driveway parking lot in front, it obviously is a business, you know? Yeah. It could be an old one single floor shopping center and that's older that could have businesses like this in it. Yeah, little strip malls, yeah. something like that. Yeah. In all these cases, it looks like the plumber should be there. And in all these cases has a decal or a signage of some sort visible from the street. So when the Google car drives by, and, and the people say, well, how do they know? Well, they did the damn mapping. They, they, did have, they have a car. The they ones, have cars roaming the streets yeah. in every city on earth all the time. They're the ones pictures. that did it, by yeah. God. <laughs> and they're the ones that, well, how do they know if it's a Regis or Da Vinci virtual? They, they know. Because they know who owns the building. But ABC roofing or plumbing has one. That so, just means that they haven't caught on to ABC that, Plumbing yet. That means they haven't caught on. That to means them. ABC Plumbing put that address in, established that business profile before virtual addresses were banned. 
Yeah. And they've never made a change since that caused the that caused the algorithm to look at the listing. I hate to bring this up, but there there are still some virtual addresses getting accepted here and there. Yeah. But it just means that they can come down more readily. Yeah. So the guy, <laughs> which didn't sign up, it, it was frustrating to me because I the, the difference in our company is that we don't lie to people. They can people can kind of tell by listening to us. We just don't lie about this stuff. We're trying to help somebody so we can have a long term fruitful relationship. It's profitable for us and profitable for the plumber. Yeah. Well, if a client calls me and they want to make a change, it's going to cause trouble for them. You let them know. I don't want to deal with the aftermath yeah. if it blindsides them. I don't want to deal with the aftermath even if I warned them because, frankly, a lot of times they don't need the warning. Right. But if I didn't say anything, I was like, yeah, no problem. We can do that. And then everything blows up. Then yeah. it's my fault. Yes, sir. I've got no backbone whatsoever. <laughs> do whatever you say. You sound like a tough, strong man. You know, I'm, I'm scared and... Yeah, sure. Google will cower to whatever you want. <laughs> you know? No, they won't. No. Yeah, but but it, it's that is one thing that people don't do. They'll just agree with you. You get confused because you weren't told the truth, possibly because the web geek had no backbone and was a wuss. I always tell people this too, and this is part of what I mean by it. We're Texas respectful and Texas straightforward. Yeah. Straightforward means that when you call, we'll say, hey, by the way, if you do this, it could obliterate you. I would equate it to chopping one arm and one leg off. <laughs> and he has used that exact yeah. analogy. Could actually already. hobble you greatly. Yeah. Do you want to do this? So I'm talking to this guy, and I said, this is the definition of it. Well, and his, he, had two, he had two addresses. The one in the suburb of Seattle was a virtual office that had been approved. It was there. Yeah. The other one was too far out of Tacoma to have any people in it. Now, I need to talk about this too. Yeah. <laughs> we call it proximity or just, I call it population, but there's proximity issues too, even if it's in the town. We're having a problem right now with a guy outside of Houston on something. I'll tell you about it in a second. That's yeah. one of the reasons I want to do this podcast. So he had the other one, and it was a storage unit where he had an RV and some equipment. He had like two of the big overhead deals. And he's like, well, yeah. I love this place. Said, so? And, said, and <laughs> by, the one difference by the way, this was the main account and it had like 40 something reviews on it. Uh, I said, I, I'm sure you're in the pack three for this map. He said, oh yeah, I am. I said, do you ever get a phone call for this? And no. Because not only was he, uh, he was a plumber in a town of 3000 with this address, but then he's a specialty trade. Yeah. Looking for leak detection. Two whammies. Yeah. This technically isn't even a plumber by by state definition. Right. This guy's just finding leaks. Yeah. And by Google's definition. Oh, you know, even more important. Maybe. I don't know what their entity is on a leak detection. Yeah. Well, it would be leak detection would be an entity that was associated with plumbing, yeah. but it may not come up in a plumbing, a strict plumbing search. So the... What ended up happening in this is that he began to justify his own viewpoint. So, well, what does it matter this? And I will tell you all, just so you can understand, I'm, I'm helping the client. So we will leave that address up on the suburb. I'm not here to turn that address in or cause any problems. Leave the one alone outside of Seattle. Just understand what it is. Move the legitimate ad office and move it to Tacoma to a legit, you know, move the main one in the wrong at, in the wrong location to a proper location in Tacoma, thirty minutes away. That is fits all these criteria, right? Right. And that way, and I said, just disclaimer, very clearly, when we go mess with the GBP, the Google Business Profile, which is what it's called today. Um, they change it all the time. It they changed like, it like six months ago. Yeah, so GB, I'm used to it now. GBP, GBP. Yeah, I, I've, <laughs> I've, I've stopped saying Google My Business yeah. every time. Or GMB. GMB flowed better. It did. GBP. I, like I got it. Yeah, GBP. Yeah. Anyway, GBP. So, GBP. 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 <laughs> anyway, so, so, bit of bit of bit of Bidden man, I'm a bidden man, bidden man. Nobody knows what we're talking about. Actually, some people probably do know what we're talking about. Trading places. Yeah, yeah. it's fantastic. All right, so um, anyway, so he's looking at moving it over there to a population center with inside what I call the loop. I don't want it on the very edge of town to where it gets close to an incorporated area because it becomes a proximity issue. Right. 
it might not show. So it, we are, we're having a trouble with a guy right now at a, on a suburb of Houston, but he's on the edge, outer edge of the suburb. The suburb already only has 100,000 people, and Houston's a massive landmass of a city for those who don't Yeah, it's know. hugely sprawled out. One, so, one of the, it's like second only to Los Angeles in terms of sprawl. The sprawl the of the actual city defined land is huge. Yeah. So there's most of the population still in the city of Houston, even though a lot of the upwardly mobile, you know, gentrification is occurring on the outer uh, suburbs as usual, but there's a lot of people in Houston. Anyway, so he's on the edge of a suburb that's adjacent to, he's on the back end of that, back behind that is just, bumpkin stuff you know yeah. country and he's on the edge of that yeah right and so it's that weird texas thing city 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 country yeah <laughs> he's not showing up well because mm-hmm. I, I wanted to use him in a podcast and he's actually his organics doing great he actually did get 39 calls last month on his uh gbp um but it ain't showing like it should yeah. So, and I called him to try to set him up for a podcast. He's busy now to go. So he, he did. <laughs> I'm busy. I'm busy, man. I'm busy, man. I gotta go. Anyway, <laughs> I'm busy. No, I gotta go. All right. Thanks. But he, he was chawing and chewing. Uh, uh, you know, when he signed up, now he's busy. But anyway, he could be doing better. Yeah. So when somebody picks an address, make sure it's in the loop or not too far on the edge. First thing people do is start trying to get around this. Put it in the city, in the city name. Not too far out, you know. Right, not too close to the edge. It doesn't have to be right downtown. It doesn't have to. It just can't be on the edge. Well, sometimes it's BFE Egypt, and sometimes it's Tacoma. <laughs> no, no, we don't want BFE. It's supposed. Well, yeah, but BFE's on the edge of Tacoma. It's like no BFE don't show up. Yeah, man. yeah, the lawyering. The technically, I'm in Tacoma. Yeah, and yeah it's I'm like not. yes. But Google knows that you're way out on the edge, so they're more likely to show you for the town, th- this edge of Tacoma and the town there, than they are the population center of Tacoma. Right. It's maddening for me to have these conversations because they're, I said, do you realize that you're justifying it to me? And it doesn't, man, I keep telling you the same thing over and over again. And when you make your decision, a very cold, calloused Google is going to lay judgment upon you. Right. And um, a machine. A machine. It is going to go, hmm, 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 okay, he's over here, so he gets this yeah. area. So period. I know that if he moved over there, he would have been upset. Why? Because he's in a specialty trade. He'd be lucky to move and touch the GBP without signaling a problem and having to prove his corporate documentation, the location with the decal on the door. What did you say they required this last time on the one? Oh, yeah. The the story I started earlier after we did the address change, got a soft suspension. Google requested a video verification. It means a guy comes out to the business with a camera and verifies everything. He took pictures of their corporate documents. Their licenses, Damn, their trucks, that's their equipment. Yeah. Like, I, I'd never heard it this bad. You, you set a decal on the door. We'd heard cases before where we had someone with a decal on the door and Google sent back, no, we need to see fixed installed outdoor signage. Jesus. <laughs> Nobody had that? Yeah. And so now, but now they're doing all this other stuff. Mm. And, and part of the reason the client called back, a little upset, and they're like, "Why did they come out and do this? Why did y'all have? Yeah, them do why this? did y'all have them do that?" And I'm like, "We didn't have them do that. They told us that they required that. Right. That that was kind of where the story."